been such a wonderful month. Just think, we're almost at the end of October. And uh, the good news is that um, we have holidays right around the corner. And uh, we've certainly has, had blessed days. I've done a lot of traveling most of this month. And uh, that's why I've been a little um, MIA. But I'm happy to be back in my regular routine and ready to go. This week, um, our meal planning is going to be uh, based on number one, things that we love, and uh, number two, a lot of prep is going to be done, just getting ready for Thanksgiving. And uh, not only Thanksgiving, but Christmas, and you know, you got a little bit going on with, with Halloween. Uh, typically, Halloween is the official day for an official fall pot of chili. And I haven't made chili other than um, when the kids were down at the beach. And uh, that was one of their requests because that's something they like. And uh, I thought, you know, I have to stay with the tradition. They know Halloween, that's what we do. So on Halloween, we'll go to visit with them, go trick-or-treating with them, walk around the neighborhood and just enjoy. I love seeing them in their little costumes and we've got cheerleaders, we've got unicorns, we've got all kinds of funny things that are going on and certainly it is a time strictly for children. Um, I want to say one thing that's very serious is, and that is that I'm asking each and every person to keep uh, praying every day for peace and uh, certainly I love each of you who, who view. Um, this is a situation, this is this is a birth. This was a this channel was a birth of something that had been laid on my heart for a very long time. And um, there are days I think I'm floundering trying to figure out, figure things out. But you know, I I am a firm believer that God gives us what we need and that he will direct us and tell us exactly the direction that we need to go. Um, I feel like as a mom, as a grandmother, as a wife, that I need to be vital in that move to prepare the young women who are uh, coming along. There are a lot of things that, that they're not seeing and that they don't know. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And many of them are floundering and there's no reason for it. You know, if they open their eyes and they look around, there are those of us who are out here who want to share and to pour into them everything as much as we can that we know, all the good things. And uh, if, you know, something crazy goes on, they need to know how to bounce. You know, they need to know how to balance work and and home and children and husbands and uh, all of those things you know they need to know how to do that and i learned by watching someone else and uh, i hope they will learn because they may not be able to see that person every day they may not even live close to their mothers or their aunts every day and so because um because of that they they are technology oriented. They always have those phones. They're always taking pictures. They're always listening to things. So let's give them quality things to, to be able to use as tools to research. Um, I, I have been inspired by many other YouTubers to, you know, as, as I started to, to research what was out there, and you know, there are a lot of women who have that same desire. So I have to think, it's, it wasn't just a message to me. It was a message to women across the world. And uh, as we traveled um, this past month into uh, to Europe, I saw moms doing some of the things that we are doing. And I also talked with young women who need what we're trying to share with them. So let's make sure our game is tight I certainly am trying to tighten mine up and make sure that everything's perfect. So we are going to meal plan this week. We're going to have everything laid out so that we're ready to go. This week's meal plan, um, because we're going to be in and out of the house, um, 
we may not have as many meals at home. We're going to do some eating out this week, but you know, that's the way it is. That's life. That's life. That's just, that's just it. So enjoy. I will try to uh, encourage each, each week. I will give you what you need so that you don't have to go searching all over the place to try to find the recipe and do all that kind of stuff because it takes time to do that. And many of you don't have that kind of time. So that's the reason why we're trying to provide it right there for you. So as you watch the video, you can just scroll down. Recipes are right there. Bam. You can print it off or you can take a picture of it or you can screen save it, whatever the case may be. And you're ready to go and ready to do some things with your family and use those tools. So God bless you all. And uh, certainly we got a lot to do between now and 2019. dinner is going to be um, spaghetti. I had initially planned to do a spaghetti casserole and it moved over to this week, but I've got too many things going on. So guess what? Spaghetti, it is out in the pot and uh, we're just going to have just regular spaghetti. And I'll add all the things that I was going to put into the casserole, but it won't be. It will just be on our plate. So stay with me. Now first, you'll notice that this should look very familiar. This is Jimmy Dean's sausage. I'm going to use one small um, pack of Jimmy Dean sausage. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to add a small package of hamburger. Or this is actually uh, ground beef, 75%. And... Uh, this fat content. I'm going to cook this on low until it browns. Put that all together and I'll chop it up as, as it goes. Break it up. And uh, once I get that far, I'm going to take the meat out, put the vegetables in, which would be the onions. Just kind of a uh, the onions. I'll put a few grated carrots in there since I have them. A little bit of celery. And guess what? I've, I've even got mushrooms for our spaghetti. So let's get cooking. Okay, I'm breaking up the, the meat as it, as it cooks. And you know I have sausage and ground beef in this particular mixture. Um, the, the sausage just adds great flavor. If you like spice, you could certainly use the, the hot Jimmy Dean sausage, but I chose to use regular and then I could control how spicy I wanted my spaghetti sauce. Now, this is just about ready. I think it'll be ready in about five minutes. And then I'm, I decided I'll make a well in the center. I'm going to add in my vegetables. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll add in my vegetables. And the other night I froze my leftover mushrooms. So I'm going to add some of those mushrooms into this mixture because I just think it will give it really good flavor, good texture. And uh, I'm going to put all of that in. So I'm going to let those get happy together. And notice I've got carrots. And I'm sure you're thinking carrots in spaghetti sauce. Well, I like uh, vegetables in my spaghetti sauce. And uh, I'm going to let the heat kind of bring those to a good place. I'm going to give them about five to ten minutes together. And uh, also, while I was off camera, I added in about a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of regular black pepper. I put in two shakes of uh, pepperoncinos. I added in um, about a quarter teaspoon of thyme. And um, I added in about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. I'll probably adjust those flavors later on, but for now, it's working for me. So um, it smells good, 
and um, your nose is the best indicator when it comes to your spices and how it's going to turn out. Now I have a full can of um, whole tomatoes that I will add to this um, and then I'll start to do more and more to the sauce but I'm gonna let this cook for just a little while you notice I've got a well in there you can see the juices that are down there in the bottom because the vegetables are going to release their juices so we're gonna let that continue to cook the carrots will add enough sweetness because you know with tomatoes tomatoes have that tendency sometime to uh, need just a pinch of sugar I won't have to do that because um, I've got the carrots so I will add some herbs of Provence later on not a lot because Conway doesn't like a lot of uh, basil um, he's okay with thyme but there's something about basil that he doesn't like a lot of um, he's learning but uh, that ha he's not there quite where I am I love basil so anyway these are cooking I'll give them a little more time and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, I'm adding in three anchovies that I've chopped up really good and they actually came in olive oil. So I put some of that oil into the container as well. Anchovies are always delicious in most Italian dishes and it's some a hint of flavor that you get in the background that you're trying to figure out what is that and uh, it's usually anchovies so we've got anchovies in this now I am going to add one I think this is a uh, 28 ounce can of tomatoes whole tomatoes that I have cut up didn't chop them small but I will break them up as they there's an end I'm going to take that off but I will break them up once they're in the pan because I don't want them really chopped up tiny I kind of want some body to the tomatoes and of course as it cooks it's going to break down a little bit anyway so we've added in one large can of whole tomatoes actually and uh, we're breaking that up I'll let that simmer for a few minutes and I'll work on the rest of the sauce because it's not nearly ready yet Okay, I have mixed together in my can some ready-made sauce. You know, if you have some that, that's already put together, that's a great thing. Sometimes I have it in my freezer. I don't at this present time, but I will. Oops, lost the top. Okay, got him. It's him out. And... I made a smaller container. Hunt's has a delicious uh, ready-made sauce as well. So I'm putting those together with what I've put together. I'm going to put the top on this, I'm going to put it on low, and I'm going to let it cook for about an hour. Oh, that tastes good. Rinse my can out. Leave the top off so the sauce can thicken just a little bit.
I have been very busy today and uh, working hard. You know, I told you that this is the time to get ready for Thanksgiving and also prep for dinner for this week. What I did first was that I grated a pound and a half of carrots. I have them grated. If you, rem if you remember from last week, I did uh, onions. And so I've placed in two cups of cell two cups of carrots into these containers. I also did four two cup containers of uh, celery and that was actually just one big bunch of celery. Um, the carrots actually had a little bit left over so I'm going to use that for dinner. Uh, in my bag here See if I can get you a little closer. I haven't labeled it yet, but I have in here uh, about five uh, diced Yukon potatoes, and I have four diced uh, russet potatoes and two russet potatoes that are grated. I've added in um, thyme and pepper and salt, celery salt, bacon. I added in a can of, all right, in this Ziploc bag, uh, as I said, I have my potatoes, I've got thyme, I've got pepper, I've got the salt, I've got uh, garlic, I've got, uh, my bacon is diced in there. If you can see it as I turn it around, there's the bacon. I added in uh, some celery salt and also some uh, pepperoncino, just a little bit, little sprinkle of uh, red pepper to go in there. The purpose for grating the, the last couple of potatoes, particularly the russets, uh, is that that will help thicken the potato soup. And the good thing about that is that you won't have to add any flour at the end. And, uh, I, I hate having to do that. You know, I'm trying to do it without flour. So um, I also, I think, I, I'm not sure if I told you, but I added in one whole can of evaporated milk. Now, let me tell you why. The reason for using evaporated milk in this particular recipe is because with a slow cooker, the, the whole purpose of the slow cooker is so that you can fix it, turn it on, and forget it. But if you have to go back and you have to add cream, you will not want to put the cream in at the beginning because typically what happens is that the cream will separate. So when you use evaporated milk, the evaporated milk achieves the same purpose, gives you that nice creaminess in your potato soup. And the good news is, is that it won't separate and you can add it at the very beginning. So now tomorrow, when I put this into my crock pot, I will add uh, at least a 32 to 40 ounce box of chicken stock. And uh, then turn it on, cover it, and go on about my business. I've got a busy day tomorrow. I've had a busy day today, but I've also have a busy day. In fact, it just seems like from now through the middle of December, I'm going to be really uh, pushing uh, to get some things done. So we still have to have dinner and you still need some suggestions. So I want to be able to give you those things that will help you uh, prepare for your family, still allow you to have great things on the table when it's time for dinner, and all you have to do is clean the uh, the crock, you know, the crock pot itself and whatever dishes that you used. So, potato soup is prepped. The carrots and celery are prepped for the holiday, and. I'm moving on. In my mixing bowl, I have, um, I'm getting ready for some honey oatmeal bread. And I have uh, one and a half coats, cups of oatmeal that I placed in earlier. 
and uh, I'm using old-fashioned oats. I added in uh, a cup of milk and a half cup of boiling water. Sometimes I'll just use straight potato water that's left over from boiling potatoes. Um, I added in three tablespoons of butter, which you can see those three tablespoons. There is two teaspoons of salt, a fourth cup of honey, a, tea, a tablespoon of brown sugar. Um, I have um, the, uh, I'm going to plug in the mixer. I'm going to let it go for a little while just to kind of get mi well mixed. And then I'm going to add in about three and a half to four cups of bread flour. And actually, uh, what I have in my container is kind of a 50-50 mix, which I use a lot. I'll also put in two packages of instant dry yeast and probably about another, uh, I may do a taste more of honey and also two beaten eggs. So I'm going to leave this on a low speed and uh, I'll add the dry ingredients later. So uh, I'm going to mix this up real good, put the eggs in and uh, the yeast and give it a chance to sit for a few minutes and then I'll add in the bread flour. Time to come together. 
You have to be patient with bread. Now this is a pretty sticky dough, and so because of that, it's not going to clean perfectly, but it is very clean off the sides, and uh, I'm going to let it now put, I'm going to put it on uh, a timer for about the next six minutes, and just let it run. Alrighty, we are at the end of the six minutes. And as you can see, our bread is uh, ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to place it into a container that I'll show you in just a minute that I can put this in the refrigerator and I can bake it whenever I want. So it's going to stay in the refrigerator. I'll probably bake a little bit. I can bake just enough and it will actually last in the refrigerator for about a week. So uh, this is going to be our bread for the week with our meals, and I can take it out fresh, roll the rolls, and allow it to rise. So um, I'm going to let this rise the first time. I'm going to put it in, in the container, cover it, let it rise, then I'll punch it down and put it in the refrigerator. The dough out of the mixing bowl as you can see there's the mixing bowl it's out of the mixing bowl and now I've placed it into this container I'm going to cover it with the top and I'm going to leave just enough space uh, for it to be for the gas to be able to escape looking for the top of course I can't find the top when I want it but uh, I'm going to Put this on, and I'm going to lock one, I'm going to lock two sides down and leave the other side up. And actually, it has a little place here on top to allow the release of gas. So that's a good thing. I can just leave that open, and it will let the gas uh, escape. But uh, this is going to be ready. I'm going to leave it out for two hours, and at the end of two hours. I'll punch it down and put it into the refrigerator. And this is my honey oatmeal bread. I wanted to show you my uh, location where I actually rise my bread. This is my microwave and there in the microwave is my container. And uh, it will sleep there for the next two hours. When you, once you close it, it's a great place to be able to rise your bread. It doesn't have any um, drafts. It's draft-free. And it tends to build up a little bit of warmth, just enough warmth to rise the bread. Good morning. I uh, am finishing up last week's uh, menu plan and just about ready to uh, upload it and put it on YouTube. And I wanted to make sure that I had an entry, uh, kind of a some closure to the week. Um, it's been a busy week, and we have certainly had a good time with friends and family. And uh, we had Halloween. We had all kinds of things that have gone on. And uh, certainly, um, 
during these past couple of weeks, it's been quite busy. Um, this week we had um, a spaghetti. It was supposed to have been a spaghetti casserole, but it ended up just a great pot of spaghetti. And I large prepped that spaghetti for a crowd because of the fact that I know I'm going to need some things in my freezer. Um, I also made some honey oatmeal bread. I made the dough for it and I have placed it into my refrigerator and actually I'm probably not even going to really prepare it until next week. But I did that on the, at the very end of the week. Um, we, I made potato soup that was delicious. I had some braised chicken with carrots and you know, that's pretty easy. You put it in, in your container. Um, I did not get to do the roasted pork chops that I had planned. So I'm going to be moving that over to another, another week. And, uh, that's the good thing about a menu plan is that you have a plan but it needs to be flexible and you need to be able to, to switch it to another place. So that's what I'm doing uh, for, uh, that's what I've done for this week. And uh, I certainly hope that you have had a wonderful week. I hope that you have been blessed and been able to just fill your uh, heart with love and put your arms around your family and uh, spend that valuable time together around the table with those you love. Have a great week. Love. Bye-bye. I have browned off uh, two and a half pounds of hamburger and uh, I'm going to uh, just kind of give it a moment. I usually add about one cup of, of water to the mixture um, toward the end of the browning and the reason I do that is because I want it to make its own beef broth. And so I'm going to I'm going to put a top on this and I'm going to let it just simmer for about 15 minutes just so that it will pull a lot of that flavor into the juice. Then I'm going to drain it but keep the juice because I want to use that in the chili. There is absolutely nothing like a delicious pot of chili. And this chili is ready for dinner. It's dinner time. I'm getting ready to serve up the plates um, or the bowls better yet. I'm going to have some cheddar cheese on the side with, uh, we like sliced cheddar cheese, so we're going to do sliced cheddar cheese with some crackers and lime, some spring onions, and we may even have a little bit of fresh tomato on top. So, dinner is served. Well, I had to transition my chili into a much larger crock pot and it is bubbling away. I've actually been to the dentist and back and um, I'm getting ready to, since you were gone, I added two cans of Hormel. Let's see if I can get it on here. Uh, two cans of Hormel uh, chili with beans, the 238 ounce cans and uh, I put in a container of green chilies and this is fire roasted and uh, it has medium heat. I'm trying to see what the size is. Oh, it's a seven, seven ounce can. I also put in two chili ready uh, cans of tomatoes. They're chili ready. That means they have a little bit of green chili already in it. And that's two 14 ounce cans. I'm going to add uh, McCormick's, um, an envelope of McCormick's chili mix to this. This is hot. 
and that's because I really haven't done much as far as heat and flavoring yet. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to put in a pack of the McCormick's Original. I'm going to use one of each which should come out to about mm, a medium heat. Now this has been going a couple of hours, just long enough for me to get to the dentist and back. I left it on high, but once I finish adding the spices, I'm going to turn it down on low and let it simmer for about the next few hours. As you can see, it is full. I left the top off of, off of it for a little while because I was hoping that some of this juice may uh, actually uh, evaporate and I think I'll continue to do that for a little while. It's, um, I'm going to let that simmer. This is Thursday evening, and uh, I'm getting ready for uh, dinner. I'm in the process of doing some marinating early so that uh, when it's time for dinner, things will move along pretty quickly. Uh, of course, for you, you may want to actually do this the night before. I uh, have been a little busy, so I haven't had a chance to, uh, I forgot, to be honest with you, forgot to do it last night. So... Uh, I am working on the marinating portion. What I'm going to do is to use a sharp knife. I'm just using a little paring knife and I'm going to punch holes even in the fat. I want that fat to render but I also want it to have some flavor. And I'm punching holes in it. Now I'm going to sprinkle with uh, some garlic granules on one side. Now I'll use my hands, they're clean. And I'll wash them as soon as I finish. Roll cooks have to do that. All right, that's the garlic. I want some uh, pepper. And let me get some onion powder. I think I have some. Yep, I do. Lots of good flavor. And this is a at least an inch, I think almost an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. It's a pretty thick steak. Okay, there's the garlic powder. I happen to have it in my hand. Here's the pepper. And I had already done the, the garlic granules. And uh, actually, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, beef bouillon in this container along with uh, a touch of soy and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. All right, in this little bowl, I'm going to place uh, some beef broth, uh, about a fourth of a cup. And I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of, of soy. I'm going to give that a little, sh little shake. Ah! Didn't mean to shake it all over the place, but it happens, and it happened on camera. Oh, well. So, you know. I have to clean up. All right, 
So here's our steak. Here's our liquid. Now I'm gonna let this sit and marinate for the next at least two hours. And at the end of two hours, we'll be ready to cook it. This dinner is gonna be um, spaghetti. I had initially planned to do a spaghetti casserole and it moved over to this week, but I've got too many things going on, so guess what? Spaghetti, it is out in the pot, and uh, we're just going to have just regular spaghetti. And I'll add all the things that I was going to put into the casserole, but it won't be. It will just be on our plate. So, stay with me. Now first, you'll notice that this should look very familiar. This is Jimmy Dean's sausage. I'm going to use one small um, pack of Jimmy Dean sausage. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to add a small package of hamburger. Or this is actually uh, ground beef, 75%. And... Um, this fat content. I'm going to cook this on low until it browns. Put that all together and I'll chop it up as, as it goes, break it up. And uh, once I get that far, I'm going to take the meat out, put the vegetables in, which would be the onions, just kind of a uh, the onions. I'll put a few grated carrots in there since I have them. A little bit of celery. And guess what? I've, I've even got mushrooms for our spaghetti. So let's get cooking. Okay, I'm breaking up the, the meat as it, as it cooks. And you know I have sausage and ground beef in this particular mixture. Um, the, the sausage just adds great flavor. If you like spice, you could certainly use the, the hot Jimmy Dean sausage, but I chose to use regular and then I could control how spicy I wanted my spaghetti sauce. Now, this is just about ready. I think it'll be ready in about five minutes. And then I'm, I decided I'll make a well in the center. I'm going to add in my vegetables. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll add in my vegetables. And the other night I froze my leftover mushrooms. So I'm going to add some of those mushrooms into this mixture because I just think it will give it really good flavor, good texture. And uh, I'm going to put all of that in. So I'm going to let those get happy together. And notice I've got carrots. And I'm sure you're thinking carrots in spaghetti sauce. Well, I like uh, vegetables in my spaghetti sauce. And uh, I'm going to let the heat kind of bring those to a good place. So I'm going to give them about five to ten minutes together. And uh, also, while I was off camera, I added in about a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of regular black pepper. I put in two shakes of uh, pepperoncinos. I added in um, about a quarter teaspoon of thyme. And um, I added in about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. I'll probably adjust those flavors later on, but for now, it's working for me. So um, it smells good, and um, your nose is the best indicator when it comes to your spices and how it's going to turn out. Now, I have a full can of um, whole tomatoes that I will add to this um, and then I'll start to do more and more to the sauce but I'm gonna let this cook for just a little while you notice I've got a well in there you can see the juices that are down there in the bottom because the vegetables are going to release their juices so we're gonna let that 
continue to cook. The carrots will add enough sweetness because you know with tomatoes, tomatoes have that tendency sometimes to uh, need just a pinch of sugar. I won't have to do that because um, I've got the carrots. So I will add some herbs of Provence later on. Not a lot because Conway doesn't like a lot of uh, basil. Um, he's okay with thyme, but there's something about basil that he doesn't like a lot of. Um, he's learning, but uh, that ha he's not there quite where I am. I love basil. So anyway, these are cooking. I'll give them a little more time, and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, I'm adding in three anchovies that I've chopped up really good, and they actually came in olive oil. So I put some of that oil into the container as well. Anchovies are always delicious in most Italian dishes, and it's some a hint of flavor that you get in the background that you're trying to figure out what is that, and uh, it's usually anchovies. So we've got anchovies in this. Now I am going to add one. I think this is a uh, 28 ounce can of tomatoes, whole tomatoes that I have cut up. I didn't chop them small, but I will break them up as they there's an end. I'm going to take that off. But I will break them up once they're in the pan because I don't want them really chopped up tiny. I kind of want some body to the tomatoes. And of course as it cooks it's going to break down a little bit anyway. So we've added in one large can of whole tomatoes actually. And uh, we're breaking that up. I'll let that simmer for a few minutes. And I'll work on the rest of the sauce because it's not nearly ready yet. Okay, I have mixed together in my can some ready-made sauce. You know, if you have some that, that's already put together, that's a great thing. Sometimes I have it in my freezer. I don't at this present time, but I will. Oops. Lost the top. Okay, got him. Fished him out. And I made a smaller container. Hunt's has a delicious uh, ready-made sauce as well. So I'm putting those together with what I've put together. I'm going to put the top on this, I'm going to put it on low, and I'm going to let it cook for about an hour. Oh, that tastes good. Rinse my can out. Leave the top off so the sauce can stick in just a little bit. Well, it's Wednesday night. And we're having chicken and rice. Now, I have my chicken cooking. I've got, I pulled one of the cubes of celery. I pulled a cube of sliced onion. And I've added it to my skillet. I've got a little butter, a little oil. And uh, just to get everything in here happy, added salt, pepper, a little um, uh, herbs of Provence, a little bit of paprika for good color and I am going to throw in the middle I'm going to do this paella style and I'm going to put in the center a cup of brown rice 
Now, my brown rice actually is kept in the freezer. This is my bag of brown rice. It was a huge bag. This is a gallon container. It was full. I keep it in the freezer and as I use it, um, it will last for a very, very long time. So uh, I think tonight we'll just about knock it out. So brown rice is about to be added. You will not believe this, but the brown rice was just short of a cup. So I'm going to place this right in the middle of my dish. I'm going to turn my heat down to kind of a medium and I'm going to place a top on it. And I'm going to let it go for, let's say about 45 minutes. And I'd say by 5.30, we'll be ready to sit down to dinner.